Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing Wednesday on new gun control legislation that they hope to push on the American people. The top Republican on the committee asked Democrats if Congressman Steve Scalise, himself a victim of gun violence and a proponent of Second Amendment rights, could testify about his unique perspective. Well, de Democrats denied him the opportunity. We reached out to the Senate Judiciary Committee because it sounded like it can't be true. And we got a comment back tonight. Now, to their credit, they did respond saying the Republicans chose two other witnesses other than Scalise, but Scalise's testimony is going to be entered into the record. I mean, Steve Scalise wants to testify. How we, we can spend 10 minutes letting him testify? Here now is Steve Scalise himself. How do you respond to their pushback on this narrative tonight, Congressman? Yeah, Laura, it was, it was pretty bizarre. I mean, historically, when Republicans were in charge, even when Democrats were in charge prior to this more radical leftist majority, uh, if a member of Congress wanted to testify on a committee, they always provided a venue for that to happen. And in this case, they were having a hearing in the judiciary on reducing gun violence. And I've got a perspective. Clearly, mine uh, dealt with something that happened to me, and I saw how guns were used to save people's lives. And it should have been able to be part of the testimony. They wanted to focus on taking away the rights of law-abiding citizens, which their bill ultimately does. And so because my my presentation would have been Well, it would have been very dramatic. It uh, would have been extremely dramatic. But my question is, and again, everyone watching, they don't care about uh, House procedures. And, and it would have bogged down there. But why didn't Doug Collins, the ranking member, insist that you go first? Like, if I'm the ranking member of judiciary, no one's stopping you from testifying. I don't get what Doug Collins did there. Who are these other people testifying who are better than you? No one's better than you. Well, Sorry, ultimately, I'm biased. I'm yeah, biased. like I mean, ultimately, he he wanted me to be able to testify as well. But in the end, I mean, if the Democrats want to, just These like sticklers Nancy, about well, this. Well, think about this. Nancy Pelosi tried to rescind the president's ability to go give a state. Now, of this union is petty. You're saying ago. this is petty. This, this is, is not how necessary. they're playing. They they think they can silence conservative voices, but you know what? They can't silence our voices. Yeah. We're going to get this message out anyway. Go read their bill, by the way, H.R. 8. If you loan your shotgun to a friend of yours to go hunting. Under certain circumstances in their bill, you could actually go to jail for a year and have a hundred thousand dollar fine. And they're saying, if you saying, loan a shotgun to if a you friend loan your to shotgun go hunting. to a friend to go hunting, you go read their bill. Uh, their bill would, under certain circumstances, actually allow that to be a felony, where you could get a year in prison and a hundred thousand dollar fine. Uh, Give me a basically, if they think it was a, if they think it was part of a gun transaction of you selling your or your gun or loaning your gun no. so to somebody else, I mean, yeah. the gun control is what they're trying to get at. They want full gun registration. Bit, bit, bit. They want to take yeah. away your rights. By the way, if their bill would have passed, it would have done nothing to stop the shooting that happened in my case, the shooting that happened in Parkland, uh, a lot of these other tragic but they shootings. Want to, they want to but go it would take away the rights of law-abiding yeah. citizens to have a gun. So they're trying to hide behind, oh, you know, we don't want any rights taken away. We want to limit gun violence. Yeah, this is this bit by bit. It's Ship about it away. taking away your rights to have a gun. We're not. We're going to call them out on it. They're not going to be able to silence these voices. So let them play these charades and have kangaroo courts. But in the end, the American people are uh, watching. That's just a loser issue for them. That's, I mean, I know they think it's a winner. It's never a winner for them. All right. The under God. What? Explain this very quickly. Well, about a minute. Now Nadler went with the. Was it the Resource uh, Council, Natural Resources uh, Committee, yeah. and Democrats who wanted the. Um, so help me God, taken out of swearing someone into. So testify. this is something new that Democrats are doing in their majority. Every House committee sets their own rules and the rules for swearing a, a person in. The Committee on Natural Resources last week literally tried to change the swearing in oath that you take to, to remove the, the phrase, so help me God. What are they they tried to about? take it away. Republicans <laughs> on the committee, Garrett Graves and others, objected and they put it back in, but they tried to sneak it through. So then in the Judiciary Committee today, they tried to do the same thing that the Natural Resources Committee did. They literally tried to take away the phrase, so help me God. So and again, God. Republicans called them out on it. Mike Johnson, in this case, called them out on it. But these are Democrats that are now chairing committees. This is Pelosi's majority. So all those Democrats who won saying they're pro-life, pro-gun, and they're against Pelosi, they elected Nancy Pelosi as speaker. And now they're trying to take away God. They're trying to silence voices. They're trying to take away your gun rights. This is only in their first month, Laura. Yeah, uh, and then, just everybody pay up. close attention. What Donald Trump did last night to lay the foundation for what we need to do to get our country back and to reject socialism, and they wouldn't even stand up again to reject socialism. That's where they're going. If they want to own socialism, let them own it. All right, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Here in the United States,
We are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free, and we will stay free. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. All right, we will never be a socialist country, but look at all these 2020 candidates. The president last night, the state of this union is strong and stating in no uncertain terms that America will never, ever be a socialist country, unless, of course, we foolishly want false promises of security and give up all our freedom. For example, look at Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, not exactly happy. Freshman lawmaker took to the airwaves after the speech saying the president feels threatened by her insane policies. All right, joining us now is, and I guess you don't do a whole lot of interviews for reaction, is acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. How do you like this job versus where you are? And uh, I love this nice job. Well, you, it's good way. to see you. It's, it's, it's my first time here. I'm never up at this time of night. Thanks so. a lot. You don't watch my show. I appreciate uh, it. I'm always in bed. I work very hard to get there first thing in the morning for the boss. So uh, I thought the speech was, was, was a blast. I thought that was what you just showed was my favorite line of the whole night. And to see the president actually say those words, we're not going to be a socialist country. And then from where I was sitting, I could see all of the, the Democrats on the floor, and not a single one of them stood to applaud that line. That was, that was just stunning. A to Green me. New Deal, they want to eliminate fossil fuels in 10 years, just at the point we surpassed Russia and Saudi Arabia. And, and just as we're proving that all of those things don't work, we don't need those things. Those things aren't the formula for success. They're not the way for families to build sustained wealth. The way to do that is to lower regulation, uh, it, lower taxes, increase energy production. We're seeing wages go up. All the things the Democrats say they can do if the government does more, mm -hmm. we are doing by having the government do less. And that was one of the highlights. Of the so I, last night. I remember back when you were just a little congressman. Yeah. Uh, I'm kidding. And I remember I watched you and, and watched you in this administration and you and I've, I've got to admit Mike Pompeo, my two favorites, and Secretary Nielsen's doing a great job. And I watch and I told people when the president shifted strategies on immigration, I told this audience, because I've known this man for well over a couple of decades, that he keeps his promises, he's unrelenting, tenacious, he's going to get money for the wall, yeah. the deadline is now approaching. I think he's got two options, just use the military as he's now doing, as Obama did and Bush did, or the national emergency. Yeah, he said it very clearly last night, he's going to get it done. In fact, I think he took it, put his hand up to take that oath, that he was going to get it done. And he is. We would love to work with Congress to do that. That's the right way to do it. It's the easiest way to do it. It's the fastest way to do it. Um, but if Congress won't participate and won't go along, we'll figure out a way to do it um, uh, with, uh, with executive authority. With, and let's be clear about this, legal executive authority. This is not a circumstance of the president overstepping his bounds. We know the next step. They're going to go judge shopping, California, Oregon, Hawaii, wherever, knowing that they're going to likely to get a liberal justice. That'll go, then go to the Ninth Circuit. Is there a way, I know Pat Cipollone is the, yeah. the White House counsel, is there a way to expedite this and get it right to the Supreme Court because it is an emergency? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple different ways that we can do it, and we're looking at all of them. You've just laid out exactly one of the challenges that we face. So how are we going to approach it if it comes to this? Find the money that we can spend with the lowest threat uh, of litigation, and then move from that pot of money to the next pot that maybe brings a little bit more threat of litigation, and then go through the budget like that. Remember that the president asked us eight months months ago to start looking for every pot of money that we could find. I was involved with it in my previous job over as the director of I heard you of found OMB. somewhere around nine trillion dollars. Trillion? No, 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 not, not nine trillion. No, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. I mean, nine billion dollars. <laughs> I gotta get my B's, T's, and M's straight now. Nine billion, I heard you found nine billion dollars. If you know where I can find nine trillion, please let me I'll know. I'll let you so, know. Uh, is that a, true? Uh, we have access, uh, legal access to substantially more than 5.7 billion dollars. That's a serious amount of money, um, and that would get the job done, because the five point seven is only for the wall, but we need new technologies yeah. and we need more agents and we need other and the president has been very straightforward about that. If you, in fact, you go back to the beginning of the shutdown when we told the Democrats, 
in writing what we wanted. We listed all of those things. We also said, by the way, it's not a, to use their words, medieval wall. It's not 2,000 miles coast to coast. Yet you still hear the Democrats going on TV and say medieval walls don't work. They, they've lost the debate here. So my John. question is, the president tweeted out, and I agree with him, the Democratic Party has moved solidly to the left. Look at those that want to vie for the 2020 Democratic nomination. Uh, Kamala Harris wants to get rid of all private health care. And that means we're forced into one government-run system. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, a wealth tax. We hear people talking about a 70 or higher percent tax rate. Yeah. Radical redistribution of wealth, and which I think will help the president in 2020. And then on this issue, the very things Democrats supported for the last, just a few years ago, they won't even sit with the president. How can you get anything done? Yeah. Go, with that opposition. Go back to their policies. If there is one silver lining to the terrible tragedy in Venezuela right now, and it is a, huma, a humanitarian tragedy of epic proportion, but the one silver lining there is it's re-educating an entire generation of Americans what's wrong with socialism. Because what you've just laid out that all the Democrats are offering us has been put into place in Venezuela, and look what's happening. There, there are people that have lost 20% of their body weight in the last couple of years. It doesn't work. It never has worked. One of the things that always stuns me about socialists is that despite the fact that history is just littered with examples of how it doesn't work and hurts people. They come out and say, well, they just didn't do it right. If you give us the power to do it, if you elect us, we'll be socialists and we'll do it right this time. We'll Until, of course, exception. you run out of other people's money. The president it's also talked a lot about foreign policy, uh, more specifically the summit, Vietnam, mm -hmm. with Kim Jong-un. Uh, no hostages return. We had American soldiers return from the 50s. No more missiles in 15 months. The president gave nothing. Now we're talking about denuclearization something that maybe could get done in Vietnam, or maybe we're going to need more time. There was a, a really good article in one of the, the Beltway papers the other day about how maybe it's time, even the critics think it's maybe time to start giving the president some credit for the foreign policy successes. Bottom line, your family, my family, everybody watching this is safer now than they were two years ago when the president got elected. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people are starting to pay attention to. All right, Mick Mulvaney, it's good to Chief see you. Staff of the President. You want a permanent job there? <laughs> I like it. I'm having a great time. All right, good so. to see you. Thank you for being with us.